We are going to create a seascape today, and so very lightly with a pencil, um, I'm going to draw where I want my sky to end. So like from this line to the top would be my sky, and I know it's super hard to see. It's because I want it light. Um, and then you're going to draw like where you're going to want your sand, okay? So this will be sand, this will be ocean, this will be sky. So it's broken up into three components for a seascape. We are going to use a wet on wet watercolor painting technique. So since it's wet on wet, that means the paper has to be wet before you start painting. Um, we're going to use this kind of brush. It's a round brush. It's kind of thick. Since our paper is big, we can use a bigger brush. We're using watercolor paints. And if yours are kind of running low, that's fine. I literally use them till there's no paint left. So use what you got and let me know if you need more once it's all done. So <clears throat> you want to think what color do you want your sky? Do you want it blue? Do you want it like a yellow kind of like sunset colors? Do you want it violet? What kind of color do you want for that sky? Um, but first you have to wet the paper. So you get the paper wet wherever you plan on painting first. Just with water. You don't want to drown the paper, but you do want to get it fairly wet. Then you're going to pick your sky color. I'm going to go with just plain old blue. And you're going to lay down paint. You do want to leave some white areas open so that shows clouds. Okay. Since the paper was wet, you're going to notice the paint is moving on you. And that's kind of the point. Painting with watercolors, especially painting a seascape or a landscape kind of sky, it really works well if you kind of just go with the flow. So I know I need to leave some white spaces open. I'm getting more paper wet as I move across it so it doesn't dry. And you want to make sure you get to the edges of your paper. And since it's wet, I can move it around a little bit. So I'm just scooching it. That's one of the fabulous things about watercolor paints. It moves. Which does mean you have to be a bit more in control and know what you're doing. But you can't move a paint like this, regular paint. Okay? All right. So here's my sky, nice blue sky. Let's soften up some of these edges. Okay, now I'm going to do the water. Same thing, you want to get it wet, but you have to be careful right here at this line. I'm not going to get the paper wet all the way up. See how I'm stopping right about here? It's because I don't want the paint to blend in with the sky. And if there's water down, you run the risk of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a blue-green to paint the water, simply because my sky is blue and I don't want the water to be the exact same color. I want to show a difference. So I'm going to do blue-green And your goal here is to try to get some lights and some darks in this water section to show a little bit of value because water is constantly moving. There's parts that are in shadow. There's parts that are in light. So up here, I'm going slow to make sure I don't get the paint into the sky. If you notice some of the sky starts to come down into your water or vice versa, just get a paper towel, dab it off. No biggie. So I'm going to do blue-green most of the time, but I am going to put just little hints of blue in there. Regular blue, the same color as my sky. Just to give it some variety. I 
I'm going to make these kind of naturally blend in with one another. While you work, before it gets too dry on you, you want to sprinkle salt onto it. This gives it a really cool effect. But I'm only putting salt in the sky, or in the ocean, sorry. Not in the sky. I want the sky to stay regular. And I go really slow around the edges to the sand here. So I'm just putting in some more blue to make it kind of blend in, give it some variety here. It will not work on dry paint, so if you put salt on dry paint, you shouldn't even really bother because it won't work. The paint has to be pretty wet. Okay, and then the last step, I'm going to rinse my brush really well. And I'm going to paint brown for the sand. And this you can just paint regular. This does not have to be the wet on wet technique. Just please be careful when you're up near your ocean because the paint might want to move on you if it's still wet. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm using a different kind of style brush. These are actually pretty big, so we're going to have to be in control with these. But these are good for like stippling, like doing little dots. Okay, and you're going to use white paint, and we're going to create sort of the white caps of the waves, the foam kind of look. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to dip the brush into the white paint, and you want to dab where you need the white foam. So you don't need a lot of paint, work in small sections at a time. So you might want to pick a spot to put a wave that's kind of crashing in on itself. I'm doing all around my sand. And as it gets further back, you can kind of try to make it a little smaller. You know this brush is big. And it actually looks good if you get some of the paint off and just kind of dry brush it a bit. And then if you're feeling dangerous, you can get a, bit, a lot of that paint on there and you can start flicking it. So I take my brush and I hit the brush. Notice how my hands are getting messy, but this gives the waves um, a little more of that splashy kind of look. So I'm even getting it a little on my face, but that's okay. We're having fun. Okay, so we wait for this to dry, and then we can add in some details to our seascape. Now that my painting is dry, I have um, drawn some objects, and I'm going to color these in with colored pencils. So you can see in the foreground here, I made an umbrella. It's at the lowest part of my paper. It's going to be the biggest if it's in the foreground. Over here, it's kind of hard to see. I made a sailboat. It's going to get smaller as I go back into space. And then way in the back, I made another tiny sailboat. So you're going to use colored pencils. And you are going to color these in to the best of your ability. And you can add value by pressing hard to show dark value, pressing light to show lighter value. This one I put right on top of a wave so it looks like it's behind the wave. So that's why this line is going to be all wiggly. So this is going to be my boat. If you want to add a texture on it, like if you want wood, 
you can add texture so we know what it might feel like. This is your opportunity to use your imagination. Um, I've seen some projects where people put like sharks in the water, people swimming in the ocean. You could do people laying on the beach, playing volleyball. Kind of your opportunity to really tap into your imagination and your creativity and what you want to include in your seascape. So the colored pencil is not going to block everything out, but it does give us enough color where it will look interesting. So I can still see the white paint coming through, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Okay, so I'm pretty much finished. Um, I could go back and put in more detail if I wanted to for sure down here, and I might. Um, but I want you to see basically how I use my colored pencil to press down hard to create some darker areas. I press lighter to create some lighter areas. So I'm showing that value. Um, I did outline this line right here that separates the ocean from my sand. Um, I put a little colored pencil there just to let it pop a little more because I was kind of losing it. And I did the same thing back here on the horizon line. I put some blue colored pencil back there um, just to make sure I could see those marks because um, it did kind of blend in with one another so I made it stand out a bit more. But so this is your opportunity to be creative. Make it as beautiful as you can. Please take your time with this step. Um, because the seascape that we painted is quite lovely and it looks very um, sophisticated and like a real professional artist could have done that. Alright, so this is our seascape. You get to use your imagination now.